praise to the Lord, my dear friends. Merry Christmas. And I want to tell you that we love you very, very much because the Lord loves us. The Lord loves his people. And this is the Holy Christmas because from time immemorial, the church has celebrated Christmas as an octave, the same as an Easter, eight days as one day. So this is Christmas day. And that's why I tell you Merry Christmas and you're free to tell people Merry Christmas. So Christmas goes in an octave till January the 1st. And then it's Christmas season moving through the Feast of the Epiphany. And even I like to incorporate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord because all these mysteries are bound together in oneness. It's magnificent, our Catholic faith. Absolutely magnificent. And despite the poverty of the humanity of the church, we trust to these higher order of things. And as you see there, the altar of the Lord in the desert. And that's, uh, that's what Christ was born to do. To give us the Holy Mass, the covenant new and everlasting. And that's why these things are absolutely important to us. This is the essence of faith to God. And this is the heart of our faith. And I want you to be deep in the knowing of the faith. I want you to be deep in your understanding of the faith. That in fact you may live it fully. Because without understanding these gifts of the Holy Spirit, without knowledge and understanding, we will never ascend to wisdom. We will never ascend to, to possess the fullness of the faith. And I desire for you to be fully mature in your faith to God. And so we're going to... I've been wanting to... Uh, to speak to you on these tremendous mysteries. So we're going to go back to the liturgy from Christmas Day. That is the 25th of December. You're like, what you talking about, Father? You just said it's Christmas Day. <laughs> we're going back to the liturgy that was the Mass of the Day on the 25th of December. The second reading from the Letter to the Hebrews. St. Paul wrote that letter. Despite the speculative theology of most modern day theo theologians. Who, as I've told you before, have educated themselves into imbecility. <laughs> Ridiculous. Listen to these beautiful words of St. Paul. Brothers and sisters. In times past, God spoke in partial and in varied ways to our ancestors through the prophets. So that's why we say they were in the cloud of unknowing that even though some things were revealed to them of God, they did not understand in fullness. There was a, a, still a darkness that covered the earth until the light itself came. That's our Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world. In these last days, he says, he has spoken to us through his son. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. Whom he made heir of all things and through whom he created the universe. Today is the feast of St. John the Apostle. And he wrote that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Jesus Christ. He was with the Father and the Holy Spirit in the time of creation. For all eternity, He was with the Father and the Spirit. And He was an active participant in creation. It said of Him, through Him all things came to be. And without him, nothing came into being. Wow. Praise the Lord. We love our Lord Jesus Christ.
and he through, through whom the universe was created came into his being as a man. The refulgence of his glory. And when he had accomplished pur purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of majesty on, on high. He returned to the Father as far superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Emmanuel, God is with us. For to who? To which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son? And this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels worship him. Magnificent these mysteries. And it is absolutely important for you to grasp them fully. So we move into the very written words of the saint that we celebrate today, John the Apostle and Evangelist. I could say he's my favorite saint of all time. I love that guy big time. The beloved disciple of the Lord. The beloved Apostle. And this is from his Gospel. The words I just spoke to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. And what came to be through Him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. That's the Christ child born unto us. He took on our humanity to raise it from its fallen nature. To liberate us from sin and death. How good is the Lord. And this light shines in the darkness. And the darkness will not overcome it. And we live in dark times. I know the weight a burden that is upon you. Especially, you know, as the Grinch tried to steal Christmas and this abomination of document that came from Rome saying to bless sin, homosexual union, sodomy. That's about as far as from true to God as you can get. And it is a slap in the face to what is holy to God? Marriage. It undermines the holiness of marriage and degrades it. And that's why, you know, I've heard many, many, many people confused and heartbroken, saddened, and undermined in their faith to God because they thought that they could always trust the church. And it's true that we can, but we can't always trust the men of the church. That's where we have a big problem. But I remind you that it has always been that way. The men of the church have betrayed to the Lord. Most pointedly, I remind people of the, the Pharisees. And that word has a negative connotation because of the ones who held that office at the time of our Lord, previous to our Lord Jesus Christ, previous to his birth, there were many, many holy Pharisees. And there were a handful of them in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. To name a few, Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, and Saul of Tarsus. That's about all I can name to tell you the truth. <laughs> but even for all the tremendous lineage of holy men, Pharisees, 
authentic religious leaders to God's people. The ones at the time of our Lord Jesus Christ were possessed by unclean spirits, demons of lust, power, greed, envy, and every other kind of wicked thing. And that's why they wanted to kill Jesus. And in fact, they did. Or they thought they did. <laughs> Those jokers thought they did. And that's exactly the same scenario that we're dealing with in our time. That's why I call them the modern day Pharisees. Authentic relig religious leaders to God's people. But they are worse than the Pharisees in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I call them the, the Pharisees on steroids. And they tried to kill our Lord. His body, the church. His truth, His word. They tried to manipulate and to debase what is true to God. But we will never fall for their trickery. And they will be absolutely destroyed under the feet of our Lord. That's why, even though these times are distressing, and I know the hardship to many people, but I tell you all the time, we can never go out of Holy Mother Church because that is the salvation of the world. And our place is not to abandon her, but in fact to fight for her at every inch and step against these wicked men. To fight for her with truth, with the truth revealed to us, as St. John continues. Listen to these magnificent descriptions that the Apostle accounts in his Gospel. A man, John, that's John the Baptist, was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light. But he came to testify to the light. And that's the same work that we're about. Or in other words, we put ourselves to be about that work. We make it our business to be about the work of testifying to the light. That's why we remind the world there would never be such thing as a blessing to homosexual unions. That is... The furthest thing from the truth. It is an abomination to God. And it is important for you to realize those things. That in, fight, in fact you might fight for the truth. That you might be numbered among the saints. As I desire to be and I hope you do too. Like the substance of John the Baptist. Or the substance of John the Apostle. So this John, he came to give testimony to the light so that all might believe through him. We desire for the world to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and to the truth that he proclaimed. I came to reveal to you the, will, the fullness of the will of my heavenly father, Jesus said. We want all people to be in the light and to know the will of God the Father. And to keep His commandments. Not to be deceived into losing eternal life. The true light. Which in, enlightens everyone. Was coming into the world. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The epiphany. The baptism of the Lord. That was coming from the hands of John, where Jesus went down into the waters to make them holy so that we, baptized, could be made holy to God, freed from sin. How magnificent the plan of the Lord. He was in the world, John said, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. And that's like this time. There is a tremendous unknowing to our Lord Jesus Christ as the darkness has crept in anew. 
but it will never overcome the light. That's why we have confidence. That's why we're not really afraid. Even though the world's being destroyed around us, it's like we're walking through the park. That's why we're able to maintain our joy. And we set our will to be joyful to the Lord. Not to be broken by all the discouraging lies that are being spewed upon the earth right now. We are not broken. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. Was that 2024? <laughs> but to those who did accept him, that's us. He gave power to become children of God. In our baptism, we are sons and daughters of the Father. And that is a powerful inheritance. Not the silver and gold of this world, but the higher precious gift of truth his word revealed to us that's how we know that there's no such thing as blessing of homosexual unions and anyone who would say that is a liar and a son of the father of lies in contradiction to light itself and i tell people all the time one time I was preaching in Del Rio, Texas, and I told to the people, I love homosexuals, which I do. I absolutely love them. You know, but this friend of mine, and I love this guy, they call him Sparky. He's a hilarious and beautiful guy. And he said, Father, he, he caught me after Mass. And he said, Father, don't say like that, you know. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> and I told him, you know what I mean? He goes, I know what you mean. I said, the people know what I mean. He goes, yeah, the people know what you mean, but you got to be careful how you say it. Because <laughs> the world always tries to twist things. But I absolutely love homosexuals. And I love them to eternal life. That's why I tell them the truth. Repent and sin no more. Repent and believe in the gospel. You are healed, I would love to say to them. If they have authenticity of, of uh, repentance, they go to the Holy Confession. They make a firm purpose of amendment. Hey, more power to you. That's why I encourage them. Go for it. Be holy to God. Deny yourself. Take up the cross and keep going. But to bless homosexual unions as if it's a good, whatever. John the Baptist would have slapped those guys and yelled out anew, repent and believe in the gospel. And even more than the sinner himself, the male homosexual or the female homosexual, even more insidious than that sin is the sin of these ones who authored that document which leads people astray. That's the most insidious. And there will be hell to pay for that one. For leading people away from the light into the darkness. For confusing people. Those are very bad things. It's not a good thing to confuse people. Especially the little people of God. The sheeps of the Lord. That's very, very offensive to God. But those who did accept Him. He gave power. And to those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural generation. That's the greatness of holy baptism. Our natural birth is far less than the glory of our birth as sons and daughters of the Father. And by the way, tomorrow is Father Clay's baptismal, not tomorrow. One month from tomorrow is Father Clay's baptismal birthday. The feast of St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm honored that I was born on his feast day. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. And this is not a birth by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision but of God. And that's why I tell foolish people because 
There are many alive in the world, walking on the face of the earth this day, who have given themselves into every kind of foolishness and by the fault of others and to their own fault, they would say like that, well, I was just a baby when I was baptized. And I tell them, no, no. You are who you are from your baptism. They may say, I left the Catholic Church. It wasn't my choice. I say, you might be rebellious and leave the Catholic Church, but you were Catholic always. You are who you are. It's like a spoiled and rebellious child who tells to their parents, you're not my parents, I'm going out. And they may say you're not my parents, but those are their parents, always. That's who we are. And that's the same thing with baptism. From That's the same reality of our substance, our, 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 our identity, our DNA. We are sons and daughters of the Father. And we will be measured by the Catholic faith, those who are Catholic. And the judgment for a rebellious Catholic is far more severe than anyone who's never been Catholic because they never were. And so they're less accountable by far than those who are baptized Catholic. The greatest gift and the greatest responsibility. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your birth that you took on our humanity. And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, among us, and we saw His glory. The glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. How powerful and magnificent is Jesus the Christ. And even as a child, He was fully God and fully man. Wonderful. John testified to him and cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me. Because he existed before me. Yeah. He was the author of all creation. Millennia before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He created the earth. And millennia before the birth of of John the Baptist, he had intention to create John. That's why John said, the one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. <laughs> Even though John was six months older than Jesus. How magnificent. I love, I love these things. And you need to know them. <laughs> you need to know them very deeply. And from His fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace. Christ gave everything. There is no new revelation after Jesus. That's why these jokers and jack wagons who come along 2,000 years later and say that they have uh, some correction or some modification that will better the truth, that is in opposition to the truth, Oh, man, these are the worst of guys. That's why I'm telling you. That's why you need to understand. And that's why you need to set yourself to fight them. Have a little substance of John the Baptist within you, who was neither afraid of Herod and neither afraid of the Pharisees. Remember that time the Pharisees came out to John and he told them, Who told you to come here? Who told you to flee from the impending wrath? <laughs> You need to tell these jokers the same thing. Who, whoever they may be, whoever they may be, outside of the church or inside of the church, you have every right as a prophet from your baptism. And not only the right, the mandate to set them straight, like John the Baptist did, regardless of the cost. Regardless of the cost. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, only the Son. God, who is at the right side of the Father, has revealed Him. 
Jesus Christ, God. And that's why we take courage and confidence. We live in magnificent times. The birth of Jesus was a magnificent time. When John proclaimed his coming and he came, that was a magnificent time. And we live in, in something very much like that. We live in a time of significance. Even every time is significant in the history of the church and of the world. But this is a particularly you know, significant time. A critical time. And that's why I encourage you to, to take heart. To be stirred by by these magnificent things anew to draw courage and hope and confidence and to boldly proclaim the truth of the Lord in the face of this corrupt and depraved generation don't be afraid to to say to family members or to people you may hear people say oh they said from Rome that it's okay for us to to be homosexuals you tell them, no, 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 no. Look at these jokers who are saying that. Look what they do. They confuse everybody. Or you may have in your in your parish a priest. Somebody was telling me just the other day that they were trying to dance around it. His priest on Christmas. Christmas Day. That this priest was trying to dance around it and to, to make justifications. And there was many people who confronted that priest after the Holy Mass. My friend told me, uh, I didn't want to disturb the Holy Mass right in the middle of it. I said, well, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But he said that they, that they all got all around that priest and were telling him, men and women, that's beautiful. I hope that you stand up and fight for the truth. And whether you are alone or with many people, that's what we have to do. We are witnesses from our baptism to the truth that was gifted to us. And we will be measured by that. Our own salvation depends upon our actions, our responses. And so listen to the beautiful words of the prophet Isaiah. Why we do not lose hope. How beautiful... Upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings. You, Lord, you were born unto us. Announcing peace and bearing good news. Announcing salvation and saying to Zion, Your God is king. No other kings of this earth make the edicts. No other kings of this earth. No other, no other positions of power however great they may be, dictate what is true to God. God alone is God, and He has revealed to us the truth. And that's to anything. That's to every single moral question. The church stands on 2,000 years of faith history, revealed to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, handed down to us from the apostles, and from faithful generations to faithful generations. We know the truth. And that's why when somebody comes along trying to, to say something different. We tell them, hey, don't let the doorknob hit you on your backside when you're going out the door. Get out of town. Or get a rope. <laughs> we don't put up with foolishness. Especially when it comes to the most important things. And that's our faith to God. We stand for it. You came announcing salvation and saying to Zion, your God is king. True that. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem. You see, time and time again when we look throughout salvation history, the Lord has redeemed His people and has rebuilt the broken down walls 
of Jerusalem. The church is the new Jerusalem. Her, her walls have been battered and burnt and broken down in many places. But we have every confidence that the crescendo of God's redemptive work is coming. His last redeeming work to vindicate the new Jerusalem, His bride, the Catholic Church. And that's why these wicked persons who have commandeered her and who desire to destroy her, they will be absolutely foiled by the Lord. They will be put to shame. And that's why we're not, we are not so shamed ourselves that we lose hope. This is a glorious time and we fight for Holy Mother Church. O ruin, O ruins of Jerusalem, stand up and sing, for the Lord comforts His people. He is there for you. How many people told me, I was so sad that I didn't see many people at the Holy Mass this Christmas. The church was empty. That's absolutely ridiculous. You ought to start whipping your own family with a belt. I know a lot of people who, you know, are so concerned about how their family feels about them that they never, they're scared to say anything. If my kids were rebellious, my family was, was rebellious, I wouldn't put on a show, like come and open gifts and, and just keep behaving badly. I would tell them, hey, you know what? Unless you guys go to the Holy Mass with me, get the hell out of here. You do your own thing this Christmas. We're, as for me and my house, we're for the Lord. You got to make a stand. It, it is no love at all to allow your children to behave badly and to, to, to make a mockery of everything to God just for the, for the uh, false, for the fa facade of consolation that you have to say, oh, well, our family was together, whatever. How can you be happy doing those things with the tremendous risk for your children and your children's children to lose eternal salvation. That's absolutely ridiculous. So you can tell your children, if y'all don't want to be faithful to God, go on your own. You know, I gave you birth into this world. I love you. I desire for your good. But if you're going to show your ass to God, get out of my house. That's what I would tell my kids. And I tell to anybody in my family. When, if, if any of my family acts stupid and rebels to God like that, I'm like, Shh, see you later. I don't know you. That's what I tell them. Because God is first. And that's why you need to understand it. You need to come to fullness of maturity. There is no charity without truth. So you say, oh, that's hard, Father Clay. You know, I have to show charity to my family. There is no charity without truth. And that's to you and your family. And that's to any wicked servant of the Lord who encourages uh, homosexual bad behavior. <laughs> homosexual sin. That's no charity at all. They say in the name of charity, we got to bless people. No. No, it will be wonderful. They can come if they repent, the door is wide open to God. But to continue to put it in the face of the Lord, to be sodomites and to, to proudly demand a blessing, that's no blessing. And it's no charity on the part of any so-called servant of the Lord. It's a lie, Stephen, a lie. The Lord has bared His holy arm in the sight of the nations and all the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of God. Can you imagine the powerful arm of the Lord? Look at Father Clay's arm right there. I'll put a... I'll put a... What do you call it? A headlock on you. Like I'll bulldog you. And you'll feel strength, but that's nothing compared to the Lord. 
No man compares to the Lord. When the Lord bears his arm, the salvation of the nations. <laughs> and that's why you better put your house in order. That's why you better put your house in order to God. And you have every right to call BS to anyone who speaks BS in the world. Outside of the church or inside of the church. And put your house in order to God. For indeed, He is coming again soon. Indeed. And that means soon. Meaning in 1,000 years or tomorrow. Because how many foolish people are deceived by time. Just on Christmas Eve, my good friend, whom I love, Philip Benya, I grew up with him. His life was required of him that day. And how fragile is life. And how short is life. Even if you live to 100 years old, that is like nothing compared to eternity or how it says to the Lord a thousand years or as a day and as a day is as a thousand years time don't mean nothing that means it's coming soon and that means you better put your house in order we don't have time to fool around I love you I love all people even gays <laughs> even those who are gender confused I love them and truth is what will separate the sheep from the goats. I desire every single person to come to eternal life. To be in the kingdom of heaven. That will be wonderful. But by the foolishness of the human person. Women and men. Many, many people will lose eternal life. And the greatest attribution the greatest attribution to the loss of eternal life comes from hired hands, false shepherds. And that's why those jokers are going to get it big time. You don't have to worry about that. You will see the floor of hell paved. I give you a blessing on this Holy Christmas Day. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui. Jesus, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. The Lord be with you. And through the intercession of our blessed mother Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, born unto us, she, queen of heaven and earth, through the intercession of the beloved disciple, John, the apostle and evangelist, May Almighty God bless you and your family for this holy Christmas and for the greatest gift, the gift of conversion, to be strong to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Adios. Bye.